so you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. We want to find the equations of all of the asymptotes of the irrational function, including any vertical, horizontal, or slant asymptotes. Before finding asymptotes, though, we normally want to factor the numerator and denominator to see if there are any common factors. Remember, the zeros of the common factors will give us holes, not asymptotes. But in this case, the numerator and denominator do not factor, so we'll begin by finding the vertical asymptotes, which will occur where we have division by zero or where the function is undefined. So to find the vertical asymptotes, we'll set the denominator equal to zero and solve for x, which would give us two x squared minus three equals zero. So we'll solve for x by first adding three to both sides. That would give us two x squared equals three. Divide both sides by two. And so we have x squared equals three halves. And now we'll solve for x by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. Remember when doing this, on the right side we would have plus or minus the square root of three halves. So if we decide to rationalize this, we would multiply the numerator and denominator by square root two, giving us x equals plus or minus, this would be square root six over square root four, or square root six over two. So the vertical asymptotes are x equals positive square root six divided by two and x equals negative square root six divided by two. Next, we can determine the horizontal asymptote by analyzing the degree of the numerator and denominator. Notice in this case, the degree of the numerator is three and the degree of the denominator is two. So for a quick review, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then we do not have a horizontal asymptote. If the degrees are equal, then the horizontal asymptote is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients. And if the degree of the denominator is higher or greater than the degree of the numerator, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. So in our case, we don't have a horizontal asymptote, but we do have a slant asymptote because the degree of the numerator is one degree higher than the degree of the denominator. So to find the slant asymptote or oblique asymptote, we'll actually have to perform long division or divide the numerator by the denominator. So we would have four x cubed minus eight x squared plus two x minus seven divided by two x squared minus three. To find the first term in our quotient, we want to know what times two x squared would give us four x cubed, and that would be two x. Or if we wanted to, we could also perform division to find this first term. Notice four x cubed divided by two x squared would also give us two x, the first term in our quotient. Now we're gonna multiply two x and two x squared minus three. So two x times two x squared would be four x to the third and then two x times negative three is negative six x or minus six x, and we'll make sure we put this under the x term here. And now we're gonna subtract by adding the opposite. So again, we can change this to addition if we change the sign of the terms inside the parentheses. This would be negative four x cubed, this is plus six x. So we bring down this negative eight x squared, and then here we have eight x, Let's also bring down this last term here. And now looking at this first term of two x squared and this first term of negative eight x squared, we wanna know what times two x squared would be equal to negative eight x squared. And that would be negative four. So we'll have minus four here. Now we'll multiply negative four and two x squared minus three. That would be negative eight x squared. And then plus 12. And now again, we're going to subtract by adding the opposite. So we'll change this to addition, change this to a positive, 
change this to a negative. And so our remainder is 8x. This would be negative 7 plus negative 12. That's negative 19 or minus 19. Which means the quotient is 2x minus 4 and then plus the remainder 8x minus 19 over our divisor of 2x squared minus 3. And now to find the equation of the slant or oblique asymptote, we want to analyze what's happening to this quotient as x approaches positive or negative infinity. Well notice how looking at this fraction here, since the degree of the denominator is higher than the degree of the numerator, as x approaches positive infinity, this fraction is approaching zero, which means our rational function would be approaching the line y equals 2x minus 4, which is the equation of our slant asymptote. So again, we have two vertical asymptotes, no horizontal asymptote, and a slant asymptote of y equals 2x minus 4. Let's go ahead and verify this by looking at the graph of our rational function. Notice how we have two vertical asymptotes, one here at x equals square root 6 divided by 2, which is approximately 1.22, and over here we have x equals negative square root 6 divided by 2, and then our slant asymptote here has the equation y equals 2x minus 4, and also notice, since we have a slant asymptote, we don't have a horizontal asymptote. I hope you found this explanation helpful.